What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to show you how to completely service your Black & Decker Air Swivel Light Series vacuum. Now, this process is identical for every single Black & Decker with the Air Swivel branding and with this basic design. If you have the Ultra model or the Light model, whatever you want to call it, in any of the various color schemes these have come in, the process is entirely identical. Now, this process is not exactly the same for the Black & Decker Power Swivel, but it's very, very similar for that as well. And at that point, you pretty much covered every modern Black & Decker upright, unless they perhaps released one that I'm not familiar with. But regardless, if you have the Black & Decker Earth Level, this will be a full maintenance guide on how to properly, basically do every basic maintenance thing. Clearing a clog, changing the filters, changing the belt, cleaning the brush roll, all that will be covered in this video. I think I said service video earlier. What I meant was a maintenance guide because those are technically two different, two different things. We're not showing the machine being disassembled down to the motor, but this whole thing is completely taken apart with Phillips head screws, so it is pretty self-explanatory. If you do do that, I did that on this machine. I stripped it apart and washed all the pieces, but we'll still show the basic parts. So if you're using this video for clearing a clog, you will need a broom handle or some sort of blunt object to push the clog out, not a coat hanger or anything like that, because that can puncture the hose because presumably you'd be using the, the actual broom handle to undo a clog in the hose because obviously the actual ductwork is not flexible enough for that. You probably need either a coat hanger that you have bent and kind of wiggle away, your way through or perhaps something like a coax cable that you could push through, something like that could do the trick as well. If you're trying to do anything with the belt or the brush roll, you will need a basic Phillips head screwdriver and if you're just changing the filters, then you don't need any tools whatsoever. You just need some digits. So we're gonna start off with uh, specifically changing the filters in this, and these will be sorted up into chapters, and chapters, if I can talk today. If I remember correctly, and if I don't, someone please comment to remind me, I will put timestamps in the description for each individual part. So if you just need to see one of those things and not all of them, then you can skip to the part in the video that you find helpful, so I'm not wasting any more of your time. So starting off with the filters, there's two filters in this machine. There's one filter up here in the canister, and one filter down here that's the post-motor filter. So we're going to start off with the canister. So there's a button right up here, you just simply push it, and the entire cyclone assembly pops off. Now I will say, my particular unit has a weird issue with the handle lock, so if it falls over at any point, don't be alarmed, just keep that in mind, that could happen. So here is the entire cyclone assembly. There's a little latch right down here, it's basically just a notch that's over a lip and you just simply open that up just like that. If you're trying to empty this into your trash can or in a dustbin outside, you just kind of flick that with your finger and all the dirt pops out. Once you close that up, there's a little tab right here that you simply press and that opens up right there. This entire cyclone piece can be lifted, lifted straight out and it separates into two pieces. You just simply turn this and you can see exactly where this lines up in there. And it just kind of fits together. Actually, not like that. I'm doing that the wrong way. There we go. So it fits together like this. Can be a bit tricky, but once you get it right, then that's how that goes back together. You can wash any of these pieces. You can wash the bin. You can wash either of these two pieces, separate it and wash it. If you get something stuck in here, if you get a lot of hair wrapped around this, you can remove this and clean that off with a brush or just your fingers. This slides right back in there. You want to do this while the bin's closed to make sure it lines up properly with the bottom of this. And your filter goes in here. Now, since I'm replacing this filter, I can't exactly show the process on how to wash this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So basically, if you're washing your filter, you just want to take this filter, run it under some warm water with some soap or whatever detergent you prefer, and just wash it out and squeeze it out until the water runs completely clear out of it and the color is restored to some degree. Once you do that, you want to let it dry for 24 to 48 hours, and then as soon as it's bone dry, squeeze it, check it out, make sure it's dry, you can then put it back into your machine. If you're replacing it, your replacement filter will look something like this, wrapped in plastic. We're just going to open this up, just like that. Now, on this particular filter, we do have some promotional materials, we'll set that aside. And we can see the filter right here is two pieces. So again, you want to separate these when you wash them. I don't know if I said that uh, a couple seconds ago, but yes, separate these when you wash them. So there's a foam pad. So the case, there's not gonna be a lot of stuff trapped in here, but when you do wash it, make sure you bang it on the side of the sink to get all the excess moisture out of it. And do that for basically every corner of this until you get all the moisture out of it once you've washed it. 
chances are you might not even have to wash this in the first place unless there's, there's actually debris caked to here. This, you will definitely have to wash. This will absorb a lot of the stuff. This is a two-piece layer. Uh, a lot of times this little felt piece on the bottom will sometimes get messed up. That can happen. Whenever you put this back together, you want to make sure that the uh, squishy piece, that's not the right terminology, but you want to make sure the squishy piece is facing out from this. And then when you put it back in, there's a little lip right here. You just simply line it up there. You can't screw it up. I'm going to be blah. I guess you can put it in upside down, but obviously it doesn't fit very well. So you put it in like that. Just pop it right in there. It doesn't click or anything. This whole thing's going to rotate. And you just close it up. Just like that. And once you put, well, actually, I say that, but uh, that's being difficult. There we go. Okay, yeah. So that is normal. I hadn't uh, had one of these in a while, so I forgot that's how that works. So it's good I did this on camera so I could show you. So when you put this filter in here, this filter is actually part of the seal with this whole dust cup assembly. So when you try to close this, it will feel like it's almost too big or like the filter is the wrong filter. But you just kind of kind of push it gently but firmly. Push it. That may sound counterintuitive, but just gently but firmly push in place. Make sure it's actually lined up correctly. And then push it in place until it clicks into place. It'll be a bit tight, but that's good because you know it's making a good seal at that point. So that's how you install the dust cup filter. And then obviously put that back on the machine and click the cyclone assembly into place. Okay, that time it didn't actually click. There we go. Okay, so you might have to do that. And just a test, wiggle it a little bit by the handle, make sure it's actually stable. Pick up, pick up the vacuum. If the vacuum falls, obviously this isn't on all the way. So, now that we've got that, let me just make sure the camera is still recording just fine. And it is. So, now for the post motor filter. So, basically right here, there's a little switch. It almost doesn't look like a switch because it's the same color as the cover, at least on my unit. So it says lock and unlock right here. Actually, it doesn't say unlock. This says lock. So you can assume that this side is unlocked. So you just grab this little switch right here. Again, it's hard to see, but there is a little switch right here. And just switch it to the unlock position. Now you can lift this grill up and off the machine. When you turn the grill over, there is the post motor filter right here. Now, unlike a lot of other post motor filters that are a pleated material, this is actually very washable. So you can wash this no problem. However, because a lot of post motor filters are usually clogged with motor carbons, and if this is old enough, it will be clogged with motor carbons because these motors do produce a lot of carbon dust. If this is completely clogged with carbon dust, it's not going to wash out properly and you might need to replace it. But uh, yeah, so definitely you can wash this, uh, same as the other filter, under warm water with whatever detergent or soap you prefer, and let this one dry for 24 hours. And once this is done, I should probably show you how to actually remove it so you know which part I'm talking about. So this is basically two pieces. There's a little felt, not felt, but like a squishy side and then a coarse side. So again, wash this. If this filter separates in any way, like with the other filter, if this separates after use, you're going to need to replace this. When you put this back in there, put the squishy side facing out of the grill and simply put that in there just like that. It should just push in with no problems. If it has any issues, just kind of squeeze it in there with your fingers and you should be good to go. Again, make sure it's fully bone dry before you do that. Line it up with this. It's a little bit tricky to line this up, admittedly. You just gotta kind of wiggle it until it pops back into place. There really is no graceful way to put this cover on. It's not designed very well. But once you get to the point where it's, it feels like it's on there firm and it's not jittering around whenever you try to move it, now you can move the lock into the lock position. And then again, just kind of wiggle this, make sure it's tight on there, make sure you installed it correctly, and your filter is completely installed. So if you've done both these steps, your Black & Decker Air Soul now has completely new filters, and suction should be restored on your machine. If it's not, we may need to move over to the section regarding claws. But first, we're going to go and look at the brush hole and the belt. So to do that, we're basically just gonna flip the machine over and recline it just like that. And once I do that, I'm gonna make sure and double check this is still in frame, and it is. I'll move this up a little bit. There we go, still in frame. So it's gonna swivel a little bit, hence the name. I'm actually gonna try to straighten this out a bit. There we go, just so it's not trying to jitter all over the place. So we're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver for the, for the bleh. We're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver for this. Sorry, I did not sleep last night. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove all the screws. So there's one, two, three 
four, five, six screws on this machine. One here, three here. Yes, this middle one is kind of hard to see, but it is down in there. And then two on the perimeter. So we're just going to go ahead and remove all these screws with a standard Phillips head screwdriver, number two, number one, well, I don't know about number one, but I believe this is a number two Phillips. And it's a very cheap one as of that. This is one that my fiance bought me as a gift and it's already kind of falling apart and I've only used it twice. <laughs> so ideally a better quality screwdriver. And if your machine is rusty like this one is, then you could do to replace these screws. Although I'll be honest, I don't know where you find them. I don't believe Black & Decker sells any replacements parts for this machine. And the only reason you can even find belts and filters is through aftermarket stuff and alternative parts in the case of the former and latter respectively. At least if the former was, if the, I said the former is filters and if I said the latter is belts, then that's what I mean. Because this uses the same belt style as the, uh, I believe this uses the same belt style as the Bissell Power Force Compact which is the Bissell style, I forgot which style it was off the top of my head, but I will put it in the description or on the video right now if I remember to look at this when I'm editing. But um, I'll link proper belts in the description so you'll know which one to get and you won't have to worry about what I say in this video because you can just look at the description. So I will just do that because that'll probably make everyone's life easier. So, do that. Get all these stupid screws out. And that's, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one's kind of rusty. Doesn't want to come out. Some WD-40 very well could help in this situation if you have any struggles. There we go, that can come out. And now we can lift off the base plate. Now there is this little gap down here that really is a pain in the neck, or this like little latch at the bottom. So I'm just going to, yeah, it... Because there's like a little latch down here that's like part of the cleaner head that really does not want to let go of this. Ah, there we go. So you just gotta kind of be kind of careful. This could break off. If it does, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. But yeah, so that's the base plate off. And now, if this squeegee is worn out, this squeegee is designed for bare floors, you might want to replace the base plate. Again, that's assuming you can find the part. And right here, we have the brush hole and the belt. So right now would be a good time if you want to remove any hair off the brush roll. You could very easily pull out the brush roll just like this. You just grab both ends and pull it straight out. Loop it, unloop it from the belt. Make, the make sure the brush roll spins good. Now this is a serviceable brush roll. You can pop off the end caps and clean it out and replace the bearings if need to. If you don't want to do all that, you can either take it to your local vacuum shop and have them do it for you, or you could just replace the entire brush roll as a full assembly. If I can find replacement brush rolls, I will link them in the description. So you want to get all the hair off this, make sure there's no hair or strings attached to this because that can mat down the bristles and even get into the side pieces where the bearings are and ruin your brush roll. If you ever have the issue where you cannot turn your brush by hand and you keep burning through belts, chances are you need a new brush roll. At the very least you need to open up these end caps and make sure there's no crud in them. And if there's not and it still isn't working, again you might need a new brush roll. So, Whenever your brush roll is working properly, you should be able to hold it in your hands by the end caps and just sort of spin it with your fingers. And it's supposed to spin very freely like it is now. You can see it's spinning perfectly fine, no issues. You can also just set it on its side like this and spin it. It should be able to spin no problem with minimal noise. If it doesn't, you may need a new brush roll. So now the belt, we just simply loop the belt around the motor spindle just like this. It is kind of hard to do because this is a bit of a tight space. The motor spindle is right here. You just got to kind of loop it back around from the top. Again, easier said than done. There's not a lot of space here to work with. But uh, there is a way to do it. If I remember, I may fast forward this section of the video. If, unless I get it just now, and then I don't end up needing to, which doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. I don't even, I don't even think I actually pulled this belt off the normal way when I pulled this apart. I think I just pulled the whole cleaner head off, you know, unscrewed it and all that, which you should not have to do. This is being more difficult than it. Sh this is more difficult than it should be.
Yeah, they, they did not design this very well. There's not hardly enough clearance to actually get the belt over the motor shaft. Okay, well. <laughs> well, if you're putting a new belt on, you could just cut this old belt off, or if it's already broken, then you wouldn't have the issue with removing this that I'm having right now. So basically, I'm just gonna. Oh, I see. So I'm gonna push. I'm gonna push the entire belt right towards the edge, and then I'm going to just grab one side and push it through. Kind of push it by the flat edge, like past the motor spindle. That is not working. I'm having. A, I'm having way more trouble with this than I should given the fact that I've been doing this crap for 15 years. Wait, 2005, was that 15 years ago? 16 years. I give up, okay, so this belt's not coming off. Um, yeah, so if you need to get this belt off and it's stretched out, just take a pair of scissors and cut the belt and pull it off. And then when you, when you put the new belt on, you should be able to kind of squeeze it in there and loop it around the motor spindle. And if your belt has writing on it, you want to make sure the writing's on the outside and make sure you use, again, the correct belt that I will link in the description. The belt should be tight on the spindle. I don't know why I'm struggling with this so much. Um, if you struggle with this and you can't figure this out, I normally not one to say this, but maybe just throw it away and buy another vacuum because <laughs> I don't like this vacuum. But I'm determined to finish this video for those of you that have this and want to keep it running. So... So yeah, that belt's not coming off, so I give up on that. But again, new belt, just just squish it on there. There's a way to do it. And uh, like I just like I just explained, with the writing out, you want to take one side of the belt, where the, one of the flat sides, and push it in there, and just kind of push it through the little gap between the side of the housing and the motor spindle. So that way you can push it around the motor spindle and loop it around until it looks like this. And then once you do that, take a brush roll loop it around the belt, grab the side with the brush roll, and fit it into the housing. It's keyed so it can only go a certain way. Got to kind of line it up a little bit. It's like an octagon shape. And there you go. That's in, oh, Make sure you don't pinch the belt on the actual uh, housing because that can damage it. Make sure the belt's centered on the motor spindle. Not so much as showing these rookie mistakes, but I guess it—I I guess in a way this is useful because it's showing the mistakes that you could make while putting this in. The other side's round; it'll go in just fine. You won't have to worry about that. Once you get it in, make sure it's pushed in all the way, and you want to spin the brush roll by hand and make sure that it is spinning correctly. If this motor shaft is not spinning freely, then chances are your vacuum probably isn't turning on, and you're probably just going to have to replace the motor in it or buy another vacuum. So perfectly well it's not this one and so we're going to go ahead and spin this by hand make sure the belt is centered on the motor spindle and on the brush roll and once you've confirmed all that we can take the base plate and pop it right back on again there's that old tab in the center right here that's going to want to click in place so okay i didn't do that <laughs> maybe don't be that rough with it it'll just click into place naturally or maybe I broke it, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Obviously if you break that little tab, it's not a big deal because the actual screws hold it in place. Assuming you can still line the thing up properly. There we go. So, line this up properly. I prefer to put this middle screw in first. That's the screw that I choose to put in first. Is that little middle one. This screw, oh, I just dropped the screw in there. Okay. That was annoying. This screw is, this screwdriver is not magnetized, is it? No, it's not. Okay. Well, that's just great. Now we gotta. This is not a pain. Oh my god. Why did you get me a screwdriver that's not magnetized? Please use a magnetized screwdriver so you don't have to deal with it. I, I know there's a thing you can get that magnetizes it. I don't have that. 
God, I want to throw this thing away so bad, but I can't because someone's buying it literally today. And thank God they're only paying 20 bucks for it. I know that sucks. I spent $15 on the filter, but I would, I would hate to charge someone more for this piece of crap. So I might not be making any money off this, but hopefully my suffering is entertaining for all y'all. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna have to pull this off camera so I can get this one. Oh no, it's so close to being lined up. Okay, no, it fell out again. Okay, let me try it. still in frame. It's, okay, it's still in frame. Okay, and then all these other screws I can just drop straight in their actual, actual holes. I can't find my drill. Can't find anything. All right, so that's done. So that's how to change the belt and the brush roll on your black neck air. So finally, we're gonna show you how to deal with a clog. Now, a clog in the hose is pretty self-explanatory, and chances are it's gonna be in the hose, because I mean, it goes straight to a hose, and it goes into another hose, and then it goes into this little thing. If there's a clog in this little thing, just get a wire or something and poke it through. Honestly, you should be able to just stick your fingers in there and get it out, but if it's really bad, stick a cable of some kind in there and just push it out through one end or the other and as far as the hoses go so this hose pops right off obviously that pops off that's how you use it it's just a twist hose so you can just kind of twist it like that you see there's a little lock right there and pull it straight up and then now you can look through it you can shine a light through it drop a coin through it that's one way to tell if the hose is clogged is drop a coin down it and if it is something stuck in there then just take a broom handle. I'm not going to demonstrate this because I don't have any broom handles on me. But just get a broom handle that's small enough to fit in here. 
you might need to get a really thin one for this vacuum because the diameter is really short and just kind of push it through and you'll be able to push the clog out either end obviously push the broom handle through the area where there's more hose than the clog so the clog has less space to travel so if the clog is right here for example put the broom handle on this end so you can push it out that way another thing you could do is wash the hose if you run some really hot water through this hose whatever's stuck in there if it's like a hairball or something it'll loosen it up and soften it up and push it out the only time that's not going to work is if it's actually like a physical blockage like if it's like a paper clip or a domino or something stuck in here like that then you're going to need some other blunt object to push it out through the other end so that's what it would be if it was that hose and of course that just pushes on and you twist it this way you just it clockwise to lock it back in place wrap it around the hose hook lift up this little valve right here where the hose connects to the base and push it right in it's friction fit just twist it so it fits into place the attachment goes here as far as the bottom hose this is just friction fit this just pops right on you can just twist this it pops right off you need to get to it and you can just poke something through here after taking this hose off just open this up poke something through here you can even poke a screwdriver through there and pop it out if you have another vacuum you can put the other vacuum on the end of this stretch the hose out and the clog might pop through if you need to remove it there's a screw right here and two more screws back here this allows you to pull this out completely if you need to wash it or replace this little uh, open flap again go about finding a part for that if you are replacing that yeah so if I find, like i said if i find whatever i can find i'll link in the description this just friction fits right back on here and then obviously that hose pops on just like that so that's it that's how to maintain your black and decker air swivel and keep it running for as long as it physically can so probably about three months and this is Intellitech Studio signing out. I hope you found this video helpful. Like I said, every part that I can find, I will link in the description. So if you need a part on this machine that Black & Decker does not provide, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about that. I can't force these companies to provide parts that they otherwise won't. Believe me, if I could, I'd do it because then I would have that part if I need to fix one of these machines that needs that part. So anyways, this is Intellitech Studio signing out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If so, leave a like. Um, if you'd like to contribute to the channel, consider backing the Patreon. And if I can figure out channel members, maybe consider that too, if I ever do figure that out. And again, this is Intellitech Studio signing out. I hope you found this video helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Peace.